Hello, this is Compound Interest Stock Guy, and today we're going to be talking about Zynerba, ticker ZYNE on the uh, NASDAQ. So stay tuned. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. It helps my channel grow. I appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Give me a thumbs down if you dislike the video. And uh, yeah, before we get into this, I want to disclose I'm not a financial advisor. This is just for entertainment information purposes. Anything I talk about in this video uh, is just for entertainment and information purposes. And uh, so do not buy or sell a stock based on anything I talk about in this video. Buy or sell after you do your research and your due diligence. So yeah. So <clears throat> uh, Zynerba is a leader in innovative pharmaceutical produce transdermal cannabinoid therapies for rare and re and near rare neuropsychiatric disorders and they announced that their CEOs uh, will be present at the 2019 HC Wainwright Global Life Sciences Conference and uh, the presentation will take place on April 9th uh, at 1210 so it's also going to be on their website so zynerba.com uh, I also want to say I'm going to get into the charts on Zynerba and I'm going to talk about their two uh, comp competitors in the biopharma industry. I mean, they're, they're, I don't think they're direct competitors really, but they're competitors because they're all on the HMMJ ETF. So, so yeah. So there we go. So. Zynerba is a rare, near, rare neuropsychiatric company. Development efforts focus in rare and near rare neuropsych disorders. Deep pipeline focus on high unmet medical needs translating into multi-billion dollar market opportunity. Four clinical shots on goal FXS, DEE, ASD, 22Q and opportunities for efficient development and commercialization strategy. And they have experienced team proven development and commercialization track record in transdermal delivery, orphan diseases, neurology, psychiatry, and they're well capitalized for uh, expected to, to be uh, continuous till 2021 in the first quarter of it and beyond plan uh, NDA filing and potential approval in FXS. So that's good to hear. So these are their ones. Autism spectrum disorder development and epileptic encephalopathies and fragile X syndrome 22 Q deletion syndrome out of refractory focal epilepsy other neuropsychiatric conditions So this is what's really interesting is their Zygel and it's a differentiate uh, and it's the only patent protected permeated enhanced pharmaceutical produced CBG, CBD gel so I think for the pharmaceutical world, for a company such as say like GW Pharmaceuticals, if they want to uh, master this this uh, industry for the uh, transdermal gels, then I think they're only real. They have to look at Zynerba. So if whether they're going to do that or they're going to just go on their own. So yeah sorry I got that noise clicking from my washing machine I should have turned that off but I'm gonna keep going uh, transdermal CBD formulation delivers CBD through the epidermis and into the circulatory system unique MOA CBD modulates multiple receptors and mediates numerous pathways including the endocannabinoid pathway uh, so a thing with uh, skin is a lot of uh, the health benefits can can really get in through your skin so that's that's why I think it's a neat opportunity and they have neuropsych indications potential utility in rare near rare neuropsychiatric conditions fragile X syndrome rare genetic development disability affects 71,000 people in US no approved drugs for that Presented 12 month Fab C open label phase 2 data at American College of Neuropsychopharmacology meeting. Uh, three month improvement sustained through 12 months of treatment, excellent, tolerable, and 
and top line results expected in the second quarter. So initiated in July 2018. So maybe they're going to get the results, say, in May or June. Or maybe later, maybe it won't be till July, but I mean they're expecting it pretty soon, and that'll be a, a good catalyst if it uh, if it's good results and treatment of fragile X syndrome anxiety and behavioral challenges with CBD. So 20 patients enrolled, dosing initiated at 50 milligrams Zygel daily may be titrated up to 250 milligrams Zygel daily. 18 patients completed 12 weeks, 13 patients rolled over and 10 ongoing. So this is the results from it. Uh, 54% social avoidance, it improved. And 41.8% uh, in irritability and 52.9% in socially unresponsive lethargic and 42.6% in inappropriate speech and 59.5% on stereotypy and 32.4% in hyperactivity. Subscales, so so yeah, it just gets more into depth on this. Again, if you want to look into this more, you can go to the Zynerba website and go to investors and then the presentation. But I wanted to uh, show my knowledge and uh, you know let it out there. Uh, month three and twelve percent improvement in behavioral symptoms of FXX and uh, social avoidance. It's helping. Uh, this is so the the light. Blue is uh, three months, and the uh, purplish blue is 12. So, irritability 51.1 and 59.2. So, yeah, it's pretty good, pretty impressive. I mean, none of these, uh, when you take medications, none of, it's going to make you perfect. It's there's always going to be, it's always going to improve. But I don't think there's a magic drug out there that just makes things perfect uh, well tolerated consistent with previous reported data no clinically meaningful trends and vital signs no THC detected in plasma discontinuation to because yeah THC is a big thing I mean that's what for kids they probably don't want to have any THC in the kids they just want it to be like CBD or I don't know, just even if it's like, I think if it's in your skin, like the THC in your skin, like from the, the creams, I don't think it actually activates uh, THC like in your body. It just, it just benefits your body like on a therapeutic level, but I could be wrong. That's what somebody told me at one of these dispensaries. So, I mean, take it at face value. Little to no redness at application site. No patient developed moderate application site rash gastroenteritis so yeah 14 weeks ongoing 12 months ongoing Zygel placebo <coughs> so yeah they're just uh, cuz yeah with uh, when they're doing these things sometimes like apparently a lot of what a drug does is just for placebo because your doctor says, yeah, it's going to make you feel better. And then they believe it because people put such a high emphasis on their doctor. And then they listen to it. So it's like your brain is programmed to believe it, right? So it's not actually helping it necessarily. It's just, but a lot of it is all like mind thing too, right? So I don't know. I could go on for days about uh, feeling good and like the doctor placebo versus actual benefits in certain things but I just want to get through this tends to request a meeting with the FDA to determine acceptability of data as basis for NDA filing seek advice on marketing and authorization preparation the treatment of behavior associated with FSX so yeah I mean if they get a patent for that I'm sure they'll if they get approved by the FDA then yeah I mean I'm sure they're gonna be on top of the world. Pair develop Duce syndrome, Dravet syndrome, early myoclonic, juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, landlocked Klapner syndrome. Yeah, a bunch of things I've never really heard of. 
developing Zygel and DEE, compelling rational for utility of CBD and DEE. Third-party clinical data show impact on CB, of CBD on seizures and behavioral issues in children. Yeah, so that's good. It's a, it's a positive impact. Six-month multi-dose study in DEE patients being conducted in Australia and New Zealand. And that this one's expected in the third quarter of 2019. So those, that will be a catalyst. Six months ongoing. Titration and maintenance, uh, 250 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams, so a lot of higher doses. Autism spectrum disorder. Anxiety restricted repetitive patterns of impairments and social communication deficits in verbal and nonverbal communication. So suggest ASD is linked to disruption in the endocannabinoid system. Yes, yeah, so the thing that people don't really understand is our whole body has an endocannabinoid system. So having CBDs is positive just for um, like linking our body together and like creating some type of harmony in our body. In social avoidance and anxiety in children with CBD. So it says exogenous CBD may modulate the endocannabinoid system and improve certain autism related behaviors. Yeah, I mean, even though that's the case, there's no real like, I don't know, the whole, the whole pharmaceutical world says that you cannot really make claims of that. Uh, it's just like, even though, even though like I believe that, it doesn't mean that you can, you can say that because there's all these like laws. I mean, I think a lot of it is just because they just want to keep opiate going for, for a little bit longer or something like that. I'm not sure, but they have these rules. <clears throat> Deletion syndrome. Yeah, I know I'm skipping through this, but it's like so much stuff to go through. Neuropsychiatric illness, anxiety disorders, ASD, and learning disabilities common and impactful. Early onset of neuropsychiatric symptoms disrupts development, QOL, and heightens the risk of later psychotic disorders. 25-fold increased risk of developing skit versus 1% lifetime. Hmm. Most common. So this is a syndrome and uh, these disabilities, it will increase the risk of developing schizophrenia. So they want to work on, on that to, to uh, deal with the symptoms so that people don't have to start having schizophrenia. Two twenty-two k modulator endocannabinoid system. So expect this one's not expected till twenty twenty. Financial strength. So they have fifty-nine million in eight fifty-nine point eight million in cash position. Uh, one twenty-nine. Expected to be yeah. So. So I said that's a that's a pretty good cash position for their market cap. It's definitely a good cash position. So this is their yeah, it'd be interesting. Zynerba. Okay, so that's that's pretty good. I mean, there's a lot of information on this uh, about it and uh, shows the kind of potential this company has. Now we're gonna look at the market cap. It has a uh, 136.74. Oh, this I don't know what's PS. Sorry, it's a 113.78 million market cap. So, and their uh, cash is is pretty much uh, a half of their market cap. So that's pretty good. I like their share structure. 21.707 million shares. Their price to book is 1.975 and yeah price of sales isn't doesn't matter in one of these uh bioceutical uh cannabinoid companies so yeah the thing with a company such as this is there is a lot of uh, pharmaceutical companies johnson johnson you know bayers and all different types of big companies in uh in pharmacies 
that are worth in the hundreds of billions of dollars and they wouldn't have a problem to buy this company for 600 million dollars or 1.5 billion dollars or you know what I'm saying so the the price that this can can go is is very much higher uh, now we're gonna look at the charts so so I I did some lines here so the net it just passed the the resistance at 6.35 now this is a day old because this isn't up to date but it's showing you the uh, where it's going so it's 635 is the resistance and it broke out of there and then 881 is the is the next resistance after that uh, yeah okay 631 okay so this is a 200 moving day average if you're new to chart reading and stuff like that a lot of the times when it when it it goes to this uh, the 200 day moving average there can be an explosive mood, a move. So you look at this, like this is like a triangle pattern where it's just getting closer, where these, uh, the 50 day moving average and the 200 day moving average, and it's a triangle and it has to go up or down because there's just so much uh, momentum in that area. Um, let's look at the Bollinger Bands too. Yeah, so. Doesn't really show much on the Bollinger Bands, but I don't know. It's just this was a red candle, and today was a green candle. It's it's really good when you get that right on when from the red candle right here, and then it starts going to the green candle and starts going up the next day. That's when you want to get on to that stock. Um, like you got into the stock right around in early morning on that March nineteenth, and then you could ride it up to to here, uh, sell like around here. And that's, I don't know, a good 20%, 25% gain for the day, uh, for, for two days, I mean. And uh, that's just by reading the charts, by finding that bottom. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, Zynerba Pharmaceuticals. So ticker ZYNE on the NASDAQ. Now, you can't buy it in Canada, so that is uh, something that you want to let people know. Okay, so they're competitive competition is in that uh, ticker I N and I think it's I N M F F C O T C yeah I M L F F I personally own 1500 warrants in this company I think they expire sometime in 2020 and then I have to look at that again but they don't expire for a bit the the strike price is 150 for them so pay 18 cents for them right so if it goes to like two bucks these these warrants would be worth like 50 to 60 70 cents but if they go to like two or three or four dollars then i'm really making money on the warrants so that's why i bought them i mean at 1500 dollars paid I don't know, like 280 bucks, right? Now, if they go from a buck fifty to three dollars, then they're going to be worth like a buck seventy or something like that. So I'd, I'll pretty much 10x my money. Whereas if I bought the stock, I would only like four or five x my money. So that's why I wanted to put. And then you don't have to put as much money down to to get those gains. Uh, it's warrants are they're a different story. I mean, some people aren't comfortable buying warrants at first. Them pretty comfortable I've been learning about warrants in the last year and I think I'm gonna I think they're gonna give me a lot of uh, a lot of value on my money uh, they take some time to to turn to fruition like say for example if if the warrants were available I'm not saying they were but you bought them like here maybe you bought them for like three or four cents and you're like yeah I think this company's going to a buck fifty or two bucks and then when it hits here, it's like gonna be worth like a buck. So you 20x your money versus like seven or eight times your money. So that's the thing. And uh, sometimes like on some other stocks, like you can make insane amounts of money on them if the stock goes in the right direction. 
Not every company has warrants available, but now uh, this company does biosynthetics for uh, for cannabis, and so their comp uh, competition with Ginkgo Biloba, Chrono's partner. Uh, uh, yeah, they're also on the TSX, so they be, they've been in the Forbes magazine. They got they have a fair amount of shares out. It's like a market cap of ninety six million, but it's less than uh than Zanerba. And uh, yeah, I mean, who knows where this company's going? But I I wouldn't put it past them going to to like two dollars or a buck fifty or three bucks in the next like year or two. Uh, people like. As the pharmaceutical companies come online and they want to get involved with cannabis, that's when companies such as this is going to explode because they're going to look at who do I, who can I get on with and then they'll make a deal with this company. So yeah, they have, I think they have some patents. I'm not going to go uh, into too much detail about this, but you can look into this company further. I might do a, a video on this company sometime, but I just want to talk about the, their competition if you're looking to buy stocks in the bioceutical uh, like pharmacy companies for cannabis. And then uh, there's other companies too I'm not thinking of. There's like Corbis Pharmaceuticals. I don't know. There's some other ones. But these are the ones that are on the HMMJ ETF. So I just was like, yeah, I look, I like these one. The Zynerba one, I really liked. I uh, I own three calls. I think they're to expire in the end of May for uh, seven fifty. So say they go to ten or twelve bucks in that time, or maybe fifteen dollars. I'll like I'll make all the money like you do ten minus seven fifty, so like two fifty. And then there's gonna be a premium, like there's gonna be bonus on top of that for the time on the on the uh, call options. So I mean. I could see myself with the uh, Zynerba, if, if it goes to eleven dollars, they'd be worth probably like four or five bucks, and I paid fifty cents for them for three call con call option contracts. So yeah, we'll see. Actually, I paid, I think it was forty five cents. That's what that's what I paid for them. And uh, XX uh, II, they're uh, two hundred fifty million market cap, so they're bigger than than. Uh, then Zynerba and Inmed, and they're dealing with uh, uh, hemp to like for agriculture to have some type of hemp that has zero percent THC, because uh, then it's going to be easier for to 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 bring it across all the states and all the stuff like that. It it's just easier with regulations. So, and then there there's some type of nicotine. Uh, product that they have that's like to be beneficial so it's not as damaging to your body uh, again you gotta look into the website to, to have like a better analysis on it and I might make a, a thorough video directly on uh, XXII but I'm just talking about their competition so if you're looking to get into their uh, their yeah their company like that for a biopharmaceutical company this is one of the the top picks that that uh, might be might be good I have call options for this company at two dollars so I'm hoping it gets to two bucks soon uh, I think they're gonna expire in July so I got a fair bit of time I didn't pay too much money like I think like 20 cents or something like that and I bought like two contracts maybe So yeah, they, they hold that uh, valuable New York State hemp research license in in New York, and they're adding to their genetic lab. I'm not gonna read this all. Anyways, I hope you like this video and uh, you learned something about the biopharma industry and uh, some of the the picks that I have in my portfolio for biopharma. These are new picks. I just started looking into them because oh, they were they were at pretty nice prices, and I just said to myself, uh, you know, this is this is a pretty decent risk reward. So I don't own any of these shares. I just own them on the the leverage side as far as like warrants or call options.
So yeah, that's what I'm what's what I'm doing. I mean, maybe in the future I might own the shares, but I just I don't really want to put too much money. I just want to play the upside leverage on the fact that these companies could go a lot higher. So uh, yeah, hope you liked the video. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe for future content, and uh, until next time, peace.